So the diagram shows a simplified view of a laser tube used in a gas laser. So this gas that's in here, this is the gas that you know the, the magic stuff happens with in order to create the um, create the laser coming out the other side. The name laser stands for light amplification of stimulated emission of radiation. What is meant by stimulated emission? So we had a, some practice at answering this type of question before. Um, it's really when the, the passing photon has an energy that is equal to, to the energy gap between two electron levels or energy levels. So if this is E1 and this is E0, you've got the electrons that are in an excited state. They've been supplied with energy. Uh, the electrons inside the gas have been supplied with some kind of energy to get them up a level. Because remember, most of the time, uh, they're sitting in a ground state. But when they, they're given energy, they'll raise up that state. But then they, they will decay back down eventually. So what happens is you send a photon along here that has an energy that is equivalent to, to E1 minus E0. So the, the energy of that photon is equivalent to that energy gap. And what that causes the electron to do is to decay down a level and emit a photon at the same time. That photon is exactly in phase. It's coherent with the, the original photon that you sent in. So that's what we call stimulate the emission. So stimulate the emission is really the, uh, to stimulate the emission of a photon by sending in a photon that has an energy equivalent to, to the energy gap. I won't bother writing that out, but we're looking at something, something along those lines. So part, that's part one. Part two. Explain the purpose of each mirror on the laser tube. Well, if you remember from the animations and what we talked about yesterday, the photons are moving backwards and forwards between uh, these mirrors here. They'll be fully reflected back the way by the fully reflected mirror, and then pretty much 99% reflected back the way at this end. 1% of that light will come out here, and that's what we see as the narrow beam of intense light that produces the laser. So the purpose of the mirrors really is to, is to reflect the photons backwards and forwards to encourage more um, emission of photons or to stimulate more emission of photons. So instead of ending up with just the two, you, you get those, those photons of a particular energy passing through the energy levels of the gas and producing all these photons that are in phase with each other. So the mirrors are really there to reflect the photons backwards and forwards to stimulate more emission. The purpose of the partially reflecting mirror is to reflect most of the radiation that hits it, most of the photons that hit it, but allow 1% to emerge on the other side, and that's how we get the, the parallel beam. B, uh, an experiment shown below, a laser beam is directed at a diffraction grating. A pattern of bright spots is observed on the screen. Explain in terms of the wave nature of light how this pattern is formed. Well, that's going back to, to the whole sort of diffraction grating thing that we've looked at. Um, Bright spots are maxima, dark spots are minima. So it's due to, to wave interference, both constructive and destructive interference. So for a maxima or a bright area, what we're looking at is waves arriving in phase and interfering constructively to create that bright patch. The dark areas are minima, or you could just call them a a dark fringe or a dark area. They are out of phase. In other words, a trough meets a peak and a, a peak meets a trough. So they cancel each other out. They interfere destructively. So always in these cases, what I would be looking for in an answer is for you to say the bright area is produced by waves arriving in phase and interfering constructively. The dark area is, is caused by waves arriving out of phase and interfering destructively. That's the easiest way. To, to describe these sorts of uh, answers. C, the laser is marked with the warning danger eye hazard. Why does this laser, which has a power output of only 0.2 milliwatts, present a greater potential eye hazard than a 100 watt lamp? Well, that's going back to what we were talking about yesterday. The irradiance of the light, which basically tells you how powerful it is, is, is really due to two things. It's due to the power rating of the laser, or the power rating of the, the light, and the area over which it's, you know, it's subjected to. So if this area goes down, then you are dividing power by a much, much lower number. So therefore, irradiance goes up. So what you're looking to say in your answer is that the, the area of the, the laser light is very, very small. So therefore, the irradiance of the radiation is at a maximum value. And that's why it's hazard.
a, a white light source will, you know, like we saw yesterday, will, will spread out over a great distance. So there's not as much irradiance because irradiance is, is the power per unit area. So there's not as much power per unit area coming from a white light source because it spreads out all over the place. Whereas a laser is concentrated on a very, very small area. So small area, and even though it's small power, very, very high irradiance because you've got all your photons packed into one tiny little area. D is the calculation part. Um, the cross-sectional area of the laser beam at the retina is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9. It's basically, these are pulsed onto the retina to, to, to heal sight defects. Calculate the light irradiance produced by the retina uh, during a pulse of light from this laser. So we know that that's, that's the equation here that we're going to use. We don't have power, however, but we do have energy here and we do have time. So power is equal, energy is equal to power times time, or power is equal to energy divided by time. The energy is 0 0.1 joules. The power rate we don't know, but we do know that the time is 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3. You can solve for P, and you'll get 200 watts. We can then use irradiance equals power over the area, because that's what irradiance is. It's the power per unit area of the radiation. Um, so that's 200, which we've just calculated, divided by the area, which is given here, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9. You get your answer of 1.33 times 10 to the power 11. And that's watts per meter squared. You know, that just comes from power per unit area, watts per meter squared. And that's your, uh, your quantity for irradiance. So a typical sort of laser question um, usually involves something about irradiance there, and that's applying the irradiance equation that we've looked at before. Of course, remember that there's the other one where we've got distance, and it passes the square of the distance, but not to be confused with this basic irradiance, which is power per unit area.